Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to be modeling this feathery with subdivision surface weights. If you are unfamiliar with the weights, these basically make your edges sharper without using sporting edges. In this tutorial, I will be combining weights and sporting edges so that we are going to get bulging and pinching free surfaces because it is a problem usually when you want to add smaller, especially circular details on your objects. But after watching this tutorial, you are going to start to figure out how you could achieve these kind of details. Uh, also, I believe this tutorial might be one of the best I have ever made in terms of subdivision surface workflow. Make sure to watch till the very end. Also, I should mention that you could use these techniques in other applications like Blender or 3ds Max. So this approach is kind of universal. Now let's get into the modeling. I will start off with a cube. Let's add this one in and then I'm going to enable fillet. And for the fillet radius, I will go all the way up so that the shape will be perfectly rounded. Then I'm going to change my Y scale, then X scale. I'm going to hit NNB. So basically, I will be using the middle polygons only, which means that I need to make the poly this cube editable. Hit C on the keyboard. Then Go into polygon mode, make a loop selection, U and L, then invert the selection, U and I, and delete these polygons. By the way, let me turn off that work plane, it's kind of distracting. Yeah, now I'm gonna try to close these holes with this close polygon hole tool, select it, then click on over here. I'm gonna change my polygon type to patch, and I'm gonna play around with these settings. Let's set this to one. Perfect, because we are getting that center edge right in the middle. Then I'm going to change my patch width. Right, now I'm going to apply the same tool over here. And here we go. Then I'm going to grab loop cut tool and add this loop cut in. Then I'm going to increase these segments to three so that we will have a uniform topology. Speaking of that, I will need to add another loop cut right in the middle, then I'm gonna set this to two. Now we have actually a informal topology. I mean, these polygons are looking as square as possible. This is gonna help us to get smaller details such as that cable. So now let's try to model this section. To model it, I'm gonna add another object. It's gonna be a cube, add this one in. I'm gonna go into model mode, scale this in, then move it over here. Then I will make it editable. It's you on the keyboard. I will go into points mode. Then I'm gonna add another loop cut right in the middle so that I could grab these points with rectangle selection tool and scale them only on the Z axis. Yeah, something like that. I will grab all the points, control A, then I will hit E to get move tool. Then I will bring this down to somewhere, I don't know, right here. Then we need to combine these two objects. To do that, I will select the cube, the first cube, hold down Alt and select Bool. Then put the second cube under that first cube. I will need to change Boolean type to union. Then I will also enable create single object because if I do that, and make the boolean editable, I will get a single object. Perfect. Now we need to clean up the topology. It's going to be pretty straightforward. I will grab polygon pen tool and connect these empty points. Right. Then for the middle section, we could add the loop cut first, right over here. Hold down shift, add this one in. Then we could grab polygon pen tool. And connect these points. By doing so, these edges in the middle will be perfectly straight. You can check this out by enabling, by opening up the coordinate system. I'm going to set this to world and make sure these are selected. And these are facing Z, so they should be perfectly straight. So the position and size of these edges should be zero. And this is exactly what we have. This is important because I will be using Smetrize tool. So in order to get a good result, they should be perfectly straight. 
Now let's try to model over here. I will first make an inset. Then I will grab the circle tool. Then I will hold down control and bring this down. Then I will do this one more time. Then I'm gonna make a loop selection. Then grab extrude tool, extrude this out just a little bit. Then select these polygons. Then bring this down. Then scale them in. After that, I will select these edges and move them up. To I'm doing this to make the bottom part uh, rounder. Then I don't know. Maybe we could move this down just a little bit more. And finally, I will add a sporting edge over here. It's gonna help us to hold up that curved surface. Now, I'm gonna make a loop selection. Then I will make a fill selection, U and F, hit E, and move this to the left. Then let's apply this Smetorize tool. Open up the options first. I will turn off Link with Hub. Then I'm gonna check out where I should mirror this. So it looks like I modeled these details on the plus side of the z-axis. This is the plus side, and after that point, it is negative side of the z-axis. So I should turn off X and enable Z, and uh, yeah, I should enable plus Z to minus Z. So these polygons will be mirrored on the right side or the negative, negative Z side. I'm gonna hit OK, and it looks perfect. Now let's check out the top section. I'm gonna make a funk break selection, U and N. Also, you could get these tools, selection tools under this menu, or you could hit U on the keyboard, which will show up all the keys you are gonna need for, for selection shortcuts. I'm gonna select these polygons, and I'm gonna make an inset. Then I'm gonna move this up, or we could select these and move these down instead. Same thing. Then maybe I can select these edges and scale them in. If you want a better topology, you can delete these and reuse this close polygon hole tool. It's another option. Okay, I believe we modeled everything we need so far. Now we are gonna get into subdivision surface weights. Now I'm gonna grab my object back and hold down Alt and select subdivision surface. Select the object back and go into edge mode. If you have ever watched my other tutorials, I use the cuts to make the edges sharper, just like these ones. But today we are going to be following a different approach and it is about subdivision surface weights. We could still use these sporting edges, these loop cuts, but these loop cuts are great to work on completed objects. But in our case, we haven't completed our model yet because you know, we need to add this cable in. In order to add this one in, we are going to need a higher density than what we have right now. Let me show you real quick. If I want to add this detail right now, I will have pinching and bulging. Like you could select this, make an inset, and use fit circle tool. And if I do something like that, and enable subdivision surface, let's add these ones in as well. We are going to start to see some bulging and pinching around that detail. I don't know if it's coming through the video, but I'm seeing it clearly. So whatever I do, I will get that pinching. This is happening because I have a low density mesh right now. And if I want to add smaller details on the surface, I will 100% get pinching and bulging. So in order to add little details, I need to subdivide my mesh one time. So let me hit Ctrl Z a few times. And I'm going to enable my subdivision surface. I'm going to hit N and B to see the wireframes, and then I'm going to set this to 1, because 2 will be too much. So if I subdivide my mesh one time, 
then I will have enough geometry to add this little detail. So what about these supporting edges? Well, if you add these ones in, these are going to increase the number of the edges. So we don't uh, need these extra ones. Also, it's going to be really time consuming to add this kind of supporting edges around these edges. But there is a quicker way to make the edges sharper, and it's called weights. Let me get rid of these edges first, or to compare, we could duplicate this. Then I'm going to select this new one and get rid of these supporting edges. Alt down shift and remove this with this whole tool. I'm going to hit Q one more time. And let's set this back to two, select object back. And let's select the edges that we want to make sharp. For example, that loop, that loop, then these edges, Alt down Shift, double click on them, then hit Q, then right click, select with subdivision surface, and weight these edges up. Perfect. I'm gonna set this back to one, and let's unhide the older one and I'm gonna move it away and enable the subdivision surface. As you can see in this version with the version with the supporting edges we are getting unnecessary amount of edges such as uh, that loop and that loop let me see yeah this one and this one on the top so absolutely unnecessary. For that reason I will continue with the weights also, it's going to be much easier to make these edges sharper. In this version, we need to add these supporting edges by hand, and also we need to solve the topology, etc. So let's hide it and continue working on this one. I'm going to hit Q and set this back to two for the moment. And let's see. Yeah, we need to make these edges sharper. So grab the subdivision surface tool and weight this up. Same here. I'm going to hold down Shift, double click on these edges, weight, solid surface, weight them up. Then these ones, obviously, then these edges. Hit Q, grab weight tool, and weight these up. Perfect. Then, yeah, we need to make these edges sharper as well. Hold down Shift, select the edges. Then grab weight tool and weight this up. Perfect. Now I will select my subdivision surface and set this back to one because two is going to be too excessive to model only for that detail. So I'm going to set this to one. But if we have larger details or more details on the surface, you may stick to two or maybe three. I don't know. But in our case, one will be more than enough. We are getting some bad polygons over here, but it's going to be easy to fix. But overall, these are looking great. Now it's time to make this side of source editable. I'm going to hit C. By the way, before making this editable, uh, I should mention the sod white tool. If you use this one instead of the generator, it's not going to work because it's, it's not going to calculate uh, that weight tag. So. Like if I want to do this, it enables some subdivision surface. It's not going to work, so you should use the generator always. Okay, let's make it editable. Hit C on the keyboard, and here we go. Now, if I want to add that detail in, I will need to select these polygons, for example, or these ones. Then I will make an inset. Then hit Circle tool. I'm going to hit E, extrude these out, then scale them in. I don't know, something like that, I guess. Then another one, scale them in. And one more time. This time I will delete these selected polygons. Now I'm going to put a new solid division surface over the top. By the way, after that point, after making the solid division surface editable, we could get rid of these edges. 
then I'm gonna add another subdivision surface. And now I will start to add my sporting edges. I mean the loop cuts. For example, that one and that one and that one. Hit Q and check the mesh. It is looking great. We can reduce the tension by sliding these edges, uh, sorry, the points off. I'm gonna hit Q. Yeah, now this is looking perfect. No pinching at all. Now we could start to add our sporting edges. Great. Then this one. Perfect. Uh, let me quickly fix these bad polygons. Going to points mode. Grab slide tool and slide this off. Nice. And that point. Great, now I will hit Q, grab my loop cut tool and add this one in. And this one. And the other parts are looking great. I mean, to make it tighter, you could still add these ones. Then maybe get rid of the unnecessary ones. And we could select these edges, sl select slide tool, hold down control, slide these in. Perfect. Then, since we have enough geometry, we could use these as uh, sporting edges to make these edges sharper. I'm going to select these. Select the first one, hold down Ctrl and Shift, and select the last edge. Then, grab Slide Tool and slide them to the left. I'm going to select Proportional. And I will do the same thing on over here. Or, we could use Symmetrize. I'm going to hit Q. Okay, these are looking fine to me. Then we could use these edges. I'm going to slide them over here, then hit Q. Yeah, perfect. Then over here, I'm going to grab these and slide them. Hit Q. Perfect. Now I'm going to use Smetrize tool so we don't have to do the same things on this side. So, open up, Smetrize. I will turn off Link with Hub and I will turn off X and enable Z. I should select minus 2 plus Z and hit OK. Perfect. I'm going to hit Q. And everything is looking great. If we get these sharp edges, it is about to form tag. Select this, turn off, use edge breaks and increase that angle up just a little bit. Nice. Then we could select that loop and make another slide by holding control. Great. Oops, something happened over here. Yeah, this, this happened because of the smetrize. Right? It looks like the center edges were not perfectly straight, but we could fix this up. I'm going to go to the top view and go into polygon mode. Select the polygons in the middle, especially over here. Yeah, then delete them. Hit Q. Perfect. So you should be really careful whenever you want to use Smetrize. The center edges should be perfectly straight. If you are not sure, you could select your center edges. By the way, I just noticed that I have another polygon over here. I'm going to just delete it. If you are not sure about your edges, if they are perfectly straight, you can double click on them and we can open up coordinates. These are facing Z, so I should zero out Z position and Z size. If you keep them like that, you are not going to have a problem with the symmetrize. By the way, we could make a Loop selection, okay, selection, split these out, go back to the first one, delete these polygons, I'm going to hide the second one for the moment, and we could extrude these in, and hide this one, and I'll hide the other one, I'm going to extrude these as well, but this time, after extruding, I'm going to hold on shift to change the direction of these edges, and maybe a sporting edge over here, 
Let's put up them. And here we go. This one is looking too sharp though. So maybe could move this up and play around with the pong angle. And so lastly, I'm gonna select this, hold on control, extrude this in, which will make these edges a little bit sharp. So in short, first always try to model the larger details. Then when you are done, side divide your mesh and try to model the little details such as this one. This is uh, very important, especially when it comes to modeling circular details such as this one. So always try to keep your mesh as uniform as possible. Then after you are done with modeling the larger details, then switch to the smaller details after subdividing your mesh one time. If you do this, also if you use weights to make the edges sharper, it's gonna make your job a lot easier. We are not gonna deal with adding these edges, the sporting edges, to make the edges sharper. I believe this is a very efficient way to model these kind of shapes, and I believe I follow this approach approach in my uh, drone modeling tutorial. If you are interested, so you can check out my uh, Gumrod page to find this tutorial. By the way, I could merge this, merge this back and let's take a look at the UVs real quick. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to reset the UVs and I will try my luck with automatic UVs. First, let's try automatic UV packed and select all the polygons, click on apply. All right, this is looking great. Some of these are merged, for example, that polygon islands, but it's completely okay. Maybe we could use cubic hit apply. Uh, actually, this is looking much better. We could enable UV map. Check the mesh. Yeah, I see no distortion at all. This is looking perfect. It could have done a better job on that seam. I mean, this is looking very visible. Usually, we want to select the seams from the least visible parts of the object, such as these edges. But for a quick UV, this is looking great. More than enough for me. Let's turn this off. Go back to the standards. And that's gonna be it. So I hope this tutorial was useful. I mean, in my opinion, it is very useful. Uh, it is really an effective way to combine these weights and subdivision surface to add little details to your objects. If you like the tutorial, remember to like the tutorial. And if you want more advanced stuff, you can check out my Mrod and Patreon. If you have any questions, let me know anytime I read every comment. So, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next ones. Bye.